Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Thank you for your awesome support on Patreon. Expect a fight. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Mecha News. Hi. I'm Luke Owen. Press the thumbs up and subscribe buttons and leave a comment down below to answer our question of the day. Which Wednesday night show will you be watching this October, AEW or NXT? We've got a packed show of news for you today, including more on that WWE versus AEW war, more changes coming to the SummerSlam card, and the real reason Dolph Ziggler was chosen to face Goldberg this Sunday. Click the timestamps down below to jump to any of those stories. And make sure you join us this weekend for all the SummerSlam fun. Ollie Davis and myself will be live streaming our reactions to both NXT TakeOver Toronto on Saturday and WWE SummerSlam on Sunday, as well as doing our usual reviews, podcasts and wrestle rambles. So enable notifications so you'll know exactly when we go live. And come watch us watch wrestling. It's better than it sounds, I swear. Something I swore at last night was the utter bastard MJF. Look, me and MJF have had our differences. He once said this to me on a podcast. Yeah, Luke, I, I don't think anybody actually cares about your opinion, thank God. And you know what? That was all fine. But now, now he's getting personal. Because this utter bellend posted on Twitter, all versions of Power Rangers suck. You're an idiot for liking it. How bloody dare you? How dare you insult a show that I loved when I was a child, even though it was a thinly veiled toy commercial with not very good acting and a series of mediocre video games, a not very good movie and a bunch of spin-offs that I actually didn't care about. How dare you insult all of that? What's next, MGF? You gonna shoot on Transformers 2? How dare you? I double dare you, motherfucker! From the classless to the classy now, as Ring of Honor announced yesterday they have signed the prestigious one Joe Hendry. The former Impact star and sometimes collaborator with WrestleTalk. Whatever happened to Grado as the general manager of WrestleTalk? Will debut with the company soon, but there's no official date as of right now. What they did release, however, was this amazing trailer video. People, the mindset is always the same. Whether I was in the gutter or surveying the mansion, the mindset is the same, and the mindset is that Joe Hendry is a world champion. You know, I knew in my gut I wasn't going to be a free agent for long. So what I did was I scoured the world. Who has got the most prestigious championships in the world, in the sport of professional wrestling? And that led me to one place and one place only. Joe Hendry is going to bring prestige back to the sport of professional wrestling. Change! Joe Hendry is going to change wrestling. He's going to change Ring of Honor. Joe Hendry is going to change the world! Wrestler, business person, entrepreneur, musician, entertainer! And one hell of a funny guy. Prestigious, come on, say it with me. Think those prestigious thoughts. Think them. And they become reality every time. The prestigious one is coming to Ring of Honor. And he's about to become a world champion. And if you want to see more of Joe on WrestleTalk, then head on over to our Screen Stalker movie and video game channel, where this week we had Joe Hendry on to talk about what WWE 2K20 can learn from his favorite wrestling games, SmackDown 2 Know Your Role and WWF No Mercy for the N64, which as we all well know, is the single greatest wrestling game ever made. Apart from WrestleMania 2000, of course, or Royal Rumble for the Mega Drive. This week not only sees NXT TakeOver Toronto with awesome matches announced like Adam Cole vs Johnny Gargano, Io Shirai vs Candice LeRae and the Undisputed Era vs Street Profits, it will also see WWE have their biggest party of the Summer Summerfest, I, I mean Summer sla Slam, Summer Slam. The card sees Brock Lesnar defend his Universal Championship against Seth Rollins and his massive bank account, Becky Lynch defend her Raw Women's Championship against Natalia, Bailey defend her SmackDown Women's Championship against Ember Moon, the in-ring debut 
of The Fiend, Trish Stratus returned to in-ring competition to face Charlotte Flair, and Dolph Ziggler taking on the returning Goldberg. Despite advertising that Miz would take on Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam, this was indeed a red herring, as reported by Dave Meltzer last week, with Goldberg returning to Raw to sign the contract and tell Dolph that he is next. Dave Meltzer also reported last week that we might see more of Goldberg moving forward, with Paul Heyman wanting to emulate Bruno San Martino at the end of his wrestling career, where he would come back for one or two shows a year for a big grudge match. And while Goldberg facing Ziggler doesn't feel much like a grudge match, Tom Colohue of Pro Wrestling Torch and Sports Kida is reporting there is a reason Dolph was chosen over everyone else on the roster. According to Colohue, Ziggler was chosen for his experience. Everyone looks good wrestling with Dolph. WWE loves Dolph. There's nothing he can't do. Adding you remember the jackhammer at Super Showdown against The Undertaker? I do. We all do. Dolph safe, and he doesn't weigh too much, really. One of the other planned matches for SummerSlam was Alistair Black vs. Sami Zayn, but that instead took place on this week's episode of SmackDown. Interestingly, it's being reported that Black vs. Zayn wasn't taken off SummerSlam due to timing reasons, but because of Vince McMahon tearing up the SmackDown script twice just hours before the show went live. The report from Dave Meltzer is that once Vince had taken out all of the things he hated from SmackDown, there was an hour of time left to fill. And so the decision was made to put Black Black vs Zayn on SmackDown rather than SummerSlam. And it would also explain why the main event of New Day vs The Planeteers went through two commercial breaks. Another rumoured match for SummerSlam was Daniel Bryan vs Roman Reigns, but that has since been scrapped as Vince McMahon reportedly felt the storyline needed more time to develop and he didn't want to rush into the match. WrestleVotes are reporting that it could be Roman vs Buddy Murphy at SummerSlam, but they are unsure if that match is going to go ahead. Dave Meltzer has added that there could just be an angle that takes place on the show between Reigns, Bryan, and Rowan. But that is also unconfirmed at this point. And the same can be said of Drew McIntyre versus Cedric Alexander, which has been building for several weeks now. According to Meltzer, Drew versus Cedric is currently on the running order for SummerSlam as of Thursday, but it could be removed come the day of the show. Something that isn't going anywhere or being removed and changed, however, is the Wrestle League Season 2 Punishment video. It's a tight race to the bottom of the table between myself, Pete, and Laurie, where you could hear us sing. There ain't no stopping us now, we're celebrating on the floor, dip diving ready to go, get ready to go. Pull up your pants, and do the muscle man dance. Word life, this is basic thugonomics, wooka 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 basic thugonomics. Here comes the money, money 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 dollar dollar. Handbag, and better than never investment bang. I'm being on a banner. So vote in the poll above my head and we'll collate all the numbers together to announce a winner in our SummerSlam review on Monday. And don't forget that SummerSlam isn't just the end of Wrestle League Season 2, it's also the start of Season 3, which will run until Survivor Series in November. Like WrestleMania 20, this Sunday is where Wrestle League begins. Again. Someone who isn't on the SummerSlam card this year is Rey Mysterio, who in the last couple of weeks has lost twice to Andrade in what is being reported as the start of a push for the former Cien Almas. However, I have heard that story several times before, so I will believe it when I see it. It's now being reported that Rey is transitioning into an enhancement talent, essentially there to just put over the younger guys and try and help turn them into stars. Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio that the mentality is Rey is 44 years old, so because he's 44 years old, his basic thing is to get new guys over. However, Meltz notes that might not be the same mentality for Mysterio himself, and speculates that Mysterio could just run out his contract which ends next October, saying that he would jump to AEW in a heartbeat. Mysterio wrestled for the prototype of All Elite Wrestling last year at All In, teaming with Bandido and Ray Phoenix against the golden elite of Kota Ibushi and the Young Bucks, and Meltzer adds that those in charge of AEW love Rey Mysterio and wouldn't abuse him like WWE currently are. And it's just another element in the ongoing WWE vs AEW war, which is only going to get hotter when All Elite Wrestling debuts on TNT on October 2nd. Along with reports that WWE are set to have NXT go head to head with AEW when they move to Fox, it's also being reported that WWE are in talks to buy wrestling streaming platform Fight TV. Fight TV currently plays host to several wrestling companies, such as Ring of Honor, MLW, Impact Wrestling, and crucially, 
All Elite Wrestling. Dave Meltzer is reporting in The Observer that WWE are so far in the discussion phase with Fight that meetings between the two parties are set for next week. Should WWE buy Fight, this would remove one of AEW's big streaming partners. But as Meltzer notes, AEW also have BR Live and there's always a chance they could air their shows on one of Turner's streaming services. But it's yet another example of WWE doing everything they can to squash AEW before they even get going on TNT. And come October, we could end up seeing the long-rumored Wednesday Night War, as it's now being reported that FS1 are set to air NXT on Wednesday night. But it won't be the current one-hour taped format, and will instead air live from 8 to 10 p.m., directly competing against All Elite Wrestling's new show on TNT. As of now, nothing is official, but the reported internal feeling is that a taped show won't work against AEW's live two-hour format, so it will have to become a live show itself. But there has been no decision made on whether the show would stay at Full Sail University or become a touring brand like Raw and SmackDown. If the show does move to FS1, that would likely take it off the WWE Network, but the show will feature more main roster stars appearing on the show in an effort to boost the ratings. TNT is available in more homes than FS1, but the internal feeling is that WWE is the more recognizable brand to wrestling fans. And has been previously noted, WWE don't need to beat AEW in the ratings, they just need to make a dent in them. This has been a long-standing rumor, and Meltzer notes in The Observer that WWE were waiting to see a date and time slot for AEW on TNT before making any final decisions. On a conference call to promote this Saturday's NXT TakeOver Toronto, Triple H addressed the possibility of NXT being on FS1 and said, we have content all over the place, and if people want to talk about counter-programming and bring it up in conversation, like, Wednesday has been the home of NXT forever right? That's where it's sat. It's been on our network on a Wednesday time slot now forever. And when other people announce their show on Wednesday, you don't hear talk about counter-programming. You just hear the announcements. For us, everything is counter-programming. We plan things long in advance. Want to see me suck at a 30-year-old Castlevania game? Well, click the video that's just appeared on screen right now to head on over to Screen Stalker. Here's a clip. So you've been this close to greatness for most of your life. Yeah, for like, I'd, 20 say like years. I'd say for a good, like, let's say 25 years, I have been close to greatness. This is history in the making. <laughs> it's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming.